We'll be live. And we are live. Welcome back to the latest episode of the Barbell Life Show. I'm your host, Tony Camper. Um, we've been we've been gone for a few months, took a little hiatus. Um, been working on a lot of things behind the scenes. Uh, so yeah, um, today's guest, I actually uh, was scrolling through Instagram one day and uh, I saw one of his posts and I was like, man, this dude's cool. I gotta, I gotta get him on the podcast. So I uh, reached out to him. Um, we've been exchanging messages now for, well, it's been a few months now. Yeah. yeah. Trying to make this happen. Um, but, uh, here we are finally put the show together and without further ado, let me introduce you to today's guest, um, uh, Mr. Chun Tan. How you doing, brother? Hey man, how are you? Now, I said your name right, right? Yeah. Chun Tan, you got a spot. Okay. Okay. Now what, uh, what is, what, what's your background? What's your ethnicity? That's a interesting name. Okay. Well, my ethnicity, I'm from Malaysia originally and I live in the UK now. Yeah, that's unmistaken with that with that accent. Um, what time is it over there? It's eight p.m. now. Eight p.m. Okay, cool, cool. So, uh, greetings from Hawaii, and uh, you're you're not the first uh, guest we've had on from the UK. Um, what is his name? He's the strongest disabled uh, powerlifter in the UK. I can't remember his name, Mark. Okay. But um, yeah, we've had a couple people from the UK, so these episodes are always a little tricky to make happen because of the time difference. But um, real quick before I get started, are you a boxing fan at all? No, not particularly. A bit. Uh, okay, I know you guys got a real rich uh, boxing uh, community out there. I I'm a huge boxing fan, so uh, you know when I make my way out there, I plan on going to Wembley and, and watching one of the big fights out there. Um, Anthony Joshua, I know yeah, he. I saw, I saw, I saw his latest fight with. Uh, was it Tamak? Te something I can't remember. I, I, saw, I saw the one before with uh, Vladimir. Oh, you watched that? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. That was a really, really good fight. Great fight, yeah. That was a classic. All right, so enough about that. Let's talk about you. Um, you were born in the UK or Malaysia or somewhere no, else? I, yeah, I was actually born in Malaysia, and then okay. I came over when I was very young. So I don't speak much Malay because um, I grew up in England. Okay. Um, um, you uh, now you're you're four ten, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm between like four nine to four ten. Okay. So, is are your parents short, or are you just special case, or how 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 did that come to be? Do you know? Uh, my my condition is genetic, so my my great grandfather, uh, he actually it skipped like a few generations, and then I inherited it. Okay, so your parents are average height then. Yeah, my dad's pretty tall. He's about five ten, five eleven. Um, really? And my mom, yeah, my mom's like, I think five five, five six. So. Now, technically, would you be considered a little person, or is it called something else? Um. Yeah, little person. I don't, I don't know if we've got like a particular term for it. Okay. Okay. Um, so growing up being shorter, um, I'm I'm five nine or five eight yes. and some change. Yeah. So uh, I get called short, which I think yeah. average height for a man is like five seven something like that. But anyway, um, being being shorter can be very limiting at times. Um, and not only that, but also it can be difficult, especially being a kid growing up, you know, um, dealing with, you know, getting teased and, and um, you know, being able to play sports, certain sports, things like that. Um, tell me what you experienced growing up when it came to um, being shorter than everyone else. So I don't know if you read my story, but obviously I had a, had a lot of depression when I was younger. Um, it wasn't actually until I was about 11 or 12 years old then I stopped growing and everyone else you know, sort of carried on because I was like the same height as everyone until a certain point. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. So you didn't even know that um, this was a thing until you hit that age? Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, because um, we've actually had a little person on the show, um, uh, Mikey Wotus. Uh, you might have seen him on Instagram. He's uh, he's like four or five or something like that, and he's a powerless. Right. Yeah, he's a beast. But um, typically with little people, um, there's certain traits that that you see, and you don't see that in you. You you just look like a, a really short guy. So I don't think <laughs> you have. I, but you get what I'm saying. Like you don't you don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you have the same uh, genetic thing that that would be associated with little people. So. Um, that's why I asked earlier. Maybe uh, it was something else, but um, so so the actual genetic term is called um, X-linked spondylopathic dysplasia tarda. That's what they named it. So it's it's like a very rare case where that's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, the only mouthful this year. Um, so it, yeah, only it doesn't. I'm not like disproportionate, although I've got like slightly longer arms. So that's like, mm. really good for like, boxing and stuff. If I, I was just gonna yeah. say you should. Take out boxing, man. Start yeah. a new division. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, when you were growing up, tell me how how the things you had to to deal with, you know, being um, shorter than everyone else. So well, I I wasn't really very socially aware in the first place when I got to a certain certain age. Um, I don't know. I just found it you uh, you get you know get teased a lot picked on um and then i don't know there were certain times where you sort of like i got like really depressed about it because you you were like wondering like, oh, how, how do i get like get girls or whatever mm -hmm. and, you know that's, like, what it all, that's what it always comes down to girls <laughs> yeah. See what y'all yeah. do to us jeez um so yeah it was it was quite a lot to deal with because obviously with the, with the bullying and then i didn't really have much confidence after that uh, until actually I got to college. So like throughout school, it wasn't, it was, I had like a few friends, but not, I didn't really have any proper close sort of relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got to college and after that, that's when I got into fitness and I started, you know, proper getting in touch with my body and so, sort of like starting to love myself more. It, it really is crazy how once you, once you get in the gym and you start, putting on muscle and getting strong and things like that, how your confidence can just completely change. Um, yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, I mean, happened with me, happened with people I've trained. It, it's it's night and day, so that's pretty awesome. Um, now, what, what's, what got you into the gym in the first place? Like, what was that point where you were like, you know what, I'm going to start working out? So... I think when I when I properly started wanting to work out was when I got to college because I had a lot of mentors there and they they sort of like inspired me to get into the gym into fitness because um, one of them actually held the world record for um, most bench presses in 24 hours. Oh like wow! In, in like a group in a, in a team, yeah. And mm. I mean, he was massive. He could kill like 50 kg dumbbells, like, absolutely massive. And I, I only weigh 40 kg. So. <laughs> Yeah, you lost um, me with the KG, man. You know we're we're stuck on the the metric system out here. Oh, I right, got a, in pounds, a calculator. Right? Pounds, pounds. Pounds, yeah. So I think I think that's like eighty two pounds or something. Like okay, 90, okay. 90, 90 pounds. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, so after that, I I learned a lot more about fitness, and we did we did a lot of like adventure sports and stuff like that, and I really started to you know, start to enjoy life a lot more. It was just a, a lot yeah. more exciting. You didn't have, I didn't have to worry. Like it was a lot more people were more open, open to me at college. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a whole, it's a whole community too. So you're meeting people that sh uh, share that same passion as you. And, uh, yeah. You make a lot of friends. So that, that's pretty cool, man. Um, now you, when you were younger, did you play any kind of sports? Or um, once you started working out, did you get into any sports? So I played badminton, actually, which I was really good at. I think it must be my, my Asian genes. Uh, I started playing that as a kid, and that, that was, like, my main sort of favorite hobby. Uh, and then I think after that, I went for county trials, but I didn't get into the sort of team. So I was a bit disheartened off that, and I, I stopped doing it. Um, but then I got into, obviously, weightlifting, 
and sort of more adventure sports stuff, like during college. And eventually I got into bodybuilding. Okay, so I want to pull up a picture, one of the pictures you've given me. Um, for our viewers out there, Google Hangout does this weird thing. Sometimes it'll make me disappear, and you'll just see my image for the rest of the show. So if that happens, take it in now. Take in the beauty because it might not last long. But let me pull up this picture um, that you uh, supplied me, and this, this basically will show – um, before you start working out to now and the change yeah. and we can give our uh, uh, viewers okay so you can obviously see the huge difference insane um, how old were you in these pictures so have well have a guess actually what's that ha have a guess oh okay um, I'm gonna say the one on the left, I could tell you're at least a teenager, maybe a young adult, because you're rocking the Calvin Klein's. You got you're sagging a little bit, you know, kind of cool dude. I'm gonna say, uh, let's say maybe 19. No, I was about 16, 17 there. Okay, and then how about on the right? On the right, I am 22. Okay, so yeah, that's a. a Pretty, pretty note. Uh, pretty significant transformation, man. Awesome. Um, oh, I'm still here. Cool. All right. <laughs> so, when you started working out, did you did you start to see like um, you know gains pretty quick? You know, putting on muscle, uh, things like that, strength. Yeah, actually, because uh, obviously I, I had people to teach me. So within about a year, I had a massive change in my physique. I, I put on a lot of muscle. I was a lot more confident. Uh, I was getting a lot more girls. So I was just, you know, I was loving life at the point. I was just like, I was addicted, nice. to, I was, I was addicted to, to the gym. I think I got a bit a bit too addicted, but that was sort of, I guess, a good thing. Too addicted is, is a subjective term because... Uh... You know, if you love it and you're passionate about it and it makes you happy. Yeah. What's that song? Uh, you know, Sheryl Crow? Yeah. She says, uh, if it makes you happy, it, 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 it must not be that bad or something like that. And, you yeah. know, so uh, it definitely it changed your life, basically. The barbell life changed your life. So yeah. uh, that's, that's, that's awesome, man. Uh, most of the guests that we have on here, uh, same thing whether they're fighting um, depression, um, mm. illness, injury. Um, for me, it was a breakup. I had a really bad breakup, and I was heartbroken. And uh, I just said, fuck it, I'm going to start working out. And uh, like you said, I started getting the girls, started feeling good about myself. I was like, Jessica who, you know? So... <laughs> <laughs> So that's it. How how to get how to get over an ex? How to get over yes, an and just put a picture of a dumbbell. Bam! That's all you need. Yeah. Um, we we should write a book, and it's just one page, and that's it. You just see a picture of a dumbbell when you open the cover. Um, okay, so we're, you started working out. You started feeling good about yourself. You know, um, confidence. You start getting ladies. Um, now. What what kind of disadvantages did you see though, um, as far as you know in the in the weightlifting world, as far as like say, um, you know, because you're a smaller stature, you know, yeah. certain things you can't do compared to other folks. Like um, for instance, like the squat rack or certain machines might be too, um, you know, not accommodating. What kind of things have you ran into with that? Uh, well, some some like machines you can't reach them properly, so I can't. I won't be able to use them. I have to use like alternative exercises, and with like squats, I can't do like too heavy squats because it it puts too much pressure on my spine. Mm. So I have to like uh, use the leg press instead. Mm. Well, you got some fucking wheels on you, man. So it, it doesn't look like you you need the squats. Um, yeah, no problem, man. So um. Has your has your stature ever have you ever been discriminated against because of it, or you know um, 
ran into any kind of issues where you were treated unfairly, anything like that, maybe not taken seriously? Mm, I think a, few, a, lot, a lot of the times when I was younger, so like, you know, at school, um, there was a lot of those scenarios, you know, where people wouldn't take you seriously. Um, or like they might try and pick on you and you'd be like, tell them to F off. <laughs> but they're just laughing, oh, we, you know. We, we can cuss here. You can, you can say fuck. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Oh. Uh, um, and then, I don't know, like sometimes when people are drunk, you know, you get those sort of remarks, but you learn to like, just sort of block it out. Mm. Yeah, people, uh, y'all drink out there in, in the UK too. Uh, yeah. I've been out there before and I know some, uh, some British uh, friends and, and you guys down some beer like no other. Um, so let me, let me rewind real quick, okay? So you had mentioned uh, you, had, you had started dealing with depression. Um, mm. Can you kind of tell me about that time in your life? You know, what kind of what, what things were going through your head and, 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 you know, the actions that you were taking when you're going through that, that time in your life? So, I I was in a quite dark place, like very the darkest place I'd ever been, and it was like because I didn't really have any purpose. I didn't have a good sort of connection with my family or any real friends, like when any like really close friends. I think I had one really close friend at school, um, and then I sort of I just remember like every day I just didn't didn't really want to live anymore it was, it was really bad and i think i got into sort of gaming so like you know playing xbox i started mm -hmm. like, sort of into halo and call of duty and like i just <laughs> i played it a lot and that was like the first thing that i i used to sort of like escape from my problems it wasn't it wasn't exactly, yeah it was like an outlet um but it was it was because i didn't really want to be here it was like a new sort of like reality Mm -hmm. Escape, yeah. Yeah, escape, exactly. And how long uh, did you deal with this? Uh, a couple of years. Okay, wow. Yeah, that's rough, man. Uh, I mean, I've I've had my 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 lows as well, and and you know, it's it's not easy. But mm -hmm. the fact that you're still here breathing says a lot yeah. to your, to your yeah, perseverance, yeah. And, and and you know, a lot of people. You know they can't they can't take it and they call it quit so um mm. respect for that but um so then you had a rebirth basically you yeah. know you 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 changed your life you got in the gym you you got jacked you got chicks you got happy again like you start doing things so tell me about this turning point in your life uh you said you know you all these things happened um now where did you go from 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 getting in in shape and and making this lifestyle change to the point where you decided okay um i want to take this to the next level and it, like body build when did that come about how did that come about so i made the decision when i was about 18 uh, but i never knew how to properly get into it and i i moved to newcastle and there was this guy in the gym and he was like apparently a professional bodybuilder so I, I was speaking to him and he was like, dude, why don't you come along this weekend? You're like, you're in great shape. Uh, well, it was next weekend. So I had like a week and a half to prepare. He was like, you're in really good shape. Just come along. I was like, fuck it. I was like, yeah, why not? What, what have we got to lose? So I, I went along to that and I didn't expect anything from it, but I got a trophy like the first time. And then uh, for like my conditioning. So it was like a special award. And then after that, I did several more competitions and it was just sort of like a domino effect. So you're telling me your very first show, you had one week to prep. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I stay very, I stay, I stay very lean all year long yeah. anyway. So, so he said I didn't. I only needed to uh, do something with salt and um, water load, and then after that. Now, what about the, uh, the posing aspect? Because I mean, I've competed once, and uh, you know it was little over 12 weeks of, of training and, and that's pretty typical in the bodybuilding world um to go in there with one week um you know your conditioning is huge obviously but yeah the posing aspect the stage presence 
um, things like that. How did you how did you do that in that field? Uh, so he he taught me all the posing. So he was he was teaching me all the all the moves and how to be like fluent with it, and the sort of like stage presence, like your smile and everything else. So he yeah. coached me with that, and I think. Without without that without him there, I wouldn't have had as much confidence, you know, to do it because he he taught me down to the T about how everything I need to know. Now, tell me how nervous you were with only a week's prep. Um, to be honest, I was really excited. I was more excited than I was nervous to like to do something like that because okay. that's that was almost my my sort of like goal to like get get on top get on the stage and. Uh -huh. And uh, so you said, you said you won uh, most uh, aesthetic or, or like you said lean or something like that. Yeah, it was a special award for like aesthetics. Okay, and then from there you said seven more contests. I did about nine more. So well, one of them was it was um, a guest appearance for the UK BFF. Oh, okay. And, and I did also did Ninja Warrior as well, Ninja Warrior UK. Now we're gonna touch on that here in a, here in a minute. Um, okay. Now since since you uh, started bodybuilding, um, tell me like how you've placed, you know, things like that, and uh, some things you've learned along the way um, during the ten competitions that you've been in. So I think one of the most important things I've learned as a general life lesson rule is to like always say yes to these opportunities that could benefit you because you never know where it, where it can take you you never you don't know how much you're going to grow from it as as a person because that's the most important thing is like those experiences um what was the other question how, how did you how did you place in your contest like how so, as far as i, I came second for, for one competition so I've actually got the trophy downstairs. Nice. Okay, so one of my earlier questions was um, people not taking you serious or, or like discriminating you against you or whatnot. Now, yeah. did you experience that at all when you entered the bodybuilding world, the competitive bodybuilding world? Uh, no, not all. Not all. Like I think everyone there had sort of a similar mindset, and they, I got shown actually a lot of respect from people. Nice, nice. That's good. Um, I know there's certain people in the bodybuilding world that kind of have, uh, there's some negativity that goes on, Yeah. but, um, it's good to hear that you are getting nothing but support. So that's, that's pretty yeah. awesome. Um, do you have, uh, do you have any other plans to keep bodybuilding or do anything else in, in that regard? I think potentially in the future, um, that could be possibility but at the moment i'm doing quite a lot of traveling as, as you know mm -hmm. so it's quite hard to keep to like prepare for bodybuilding comp competition yeah, yeah, yeah. i feel you um uh, let's see now you say you're the uk's smallest bodybuilder um yeah. now where do you where do you how do you substantiate that claim uh, what do you mean? Well, how did I come across the claim? Like, how how do you know you're the smallest? Oh, because um, I got told. Well, I got told at the uh, one of the competitions that was, and they wanted to do an article with me. So it was for Flex Magazine. Um, oh, nice. So they wrote, yeah, so they wrote an article about the Britain's smallest bodybuilder, and then after that, um, Lad Bible wrote an article about me as well. Nice. So that's how I came across. Nice. That's a pretty cool uh, title to have. Uh, yeah. I lost my train of thought for a second. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about Lad Bible and Flex Magazine. I'm like, damn, okay, dude. Um, oh, so have you ever like approached uh, Guinness Book of World Records or anything like that? Because that's yeah, got to yeah. be some kind of title. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did approach them about it. So I um, basically they said. You can either pay to get it done, or it's free. But you just need to, you need to have um, some sort of someone there filming it and send it off to them. Uh, okay. I haven't actually got around to it yet. So you should definitely do that, man. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. Especially when they do their little shows and stuff, put you on there. 
Um, okay, so let's talk about uh, the UK Ninja Warrior. How'd that come about? Um, so I did a TV program before that called Judge Render. Which no, what's kind of, It's kind of like Judge Judy. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah, because I asked. Uh, I got asked to go on two, two TV programs before that. And then I th after that, I was like, oh, man, I'm, I need to go for something else. And then I thought to myself, I was like, oh, yeah, Ninja Warrior UK. Because, you know, I love exciting shit like that. So I, I applied for it. I sent a video out and they wanted me straight on there. They did a whole sort of um, sort of video for me before as well. You know, okay. your, your personal video. And... Yeah, that that was really that was one of the, my top life experiences. I'd say it was, it was so exhilarating. Well, let me um, let me pull up some of the footage from your episode. Um, for those watching, this is a, a secondhand video, so somebody was recording this on a phone or a camera and onto the TV. So, um, but it's good enough quality to where you can see what's going on in here. So, let me pull this up. And again, if I disappear for the rest of the show. Hey, it lasted 30 minutes, so hold on one second, okay? I'll we'll pull this up. Now, who who uh, filmed this for you? That was my little brother. Okay, here we go. To turn this off. What's going on here? All right, let me try to get this thing off. There we go. All right, so uh, yeah, they, there goes my image. I called it. So, anyway, <laughs> what did you think of that? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's freaking cool, man. Uh, what? How was that experience? Uh, it looks like a, a ton of fun. Yeah, man, it was a lot of fun. Like that was one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Really? Yeah, it's just like the so, the course itself. It's so much bigger in like real life. Oh, so it looks bigger in in, in reality than it does on TV. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like it's just so big because it's so far along as well. And you're looking at it, and my, I've never felt like so much adrenaline in my system at once. Now, how did you do on the contest? It was like you against a, a few other people, or how does that work? Yeah, so you basically need to make it to the end at the quickest time. And the top, I think, 20 people get through to the next round, or something, something like that. Okay. Um, you ever watched uh, the show American Gladiators? I think I've seen it like a long time ago. Yeah, it's it's an old one. They brought it back a few years back. But anyway, it reminds me of that. Um, yeah. I like how uh, 
in in the video they just kept playing the the end over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I really I really hurt my head because. Uh, Did you really? Yeah, yeah it looked like you went face first. Yeah, I full on smashed my head into it, which uh, gave me a little concussion. Oh wow! You didn't get knocked out or anything, did you? No, no, my head was just ringing for like three days after. Wow, dang, yeah, because they kept. It looked like your head went straight into that wall. I don't know how padded those things are. It looks padded, but even then, I mean, you 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 go into anything fast enough or from from a high uh, elevation, it's still gonna hurt. Yeah, definitely. Um. Okay, so. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Um, tell me about some of these other shows you've been on. You said you were on two before. One was like Judge Duty. Like, explain explain that to me. Uh, so uh, one one of them is called Judge Rinder, and uh, we, I took my friend on because we we're both nightclub promoters in Newcastle, and he stole my protein shake, so I took him on there. <laughs> uh, and then the other one was a documentary, which I can send to you after. It's just a documentary. Uh, on German television about my life and uh, my life bodybuilding. Oh, wow. Okay. And these uh, both aired, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I did, I also did Coach Trip this year as well. Which oh, what is, is that? It's, um, it's sort of like a reality show where you you do two activities every day. So we're doing like cliff jumping, uh, we do like parasailing, so like all these sort of like different exhilarating activities. Uh, which is definitely my thing again. And, yeah. And then, but at the end of the day, so you're, you're in a couple, right? So me and a friend went on and everyone else is in couples and you have to vote, vote for the couple you like the least at the end of the day. And whoever gets the most votes will get a yellow card. If you get two yellow cards, then you're off the show. So it's kind of like a survivor in a sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. Wow. That sounds fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> Real quick, I can't pass over this without without asking you. You mentioned uh, the Judge Judy type show where you said your buddy stole your protein shakes, so you took him to court. Yeah. <laughs> now is this now something like this? Is it scripted or is this like a a real thing? You saw an opportunity, and said okay, and they ate it up. Yeah, it was like a um, bit both really. Now did did you get uh, did you win the case? Yeah, I did. And what, he had to buy you some protein or what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, he, had to, he had to reimburse me. Now, now, did he actually get you your protein? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I, got, I, got, I got reimbursed the amount that it was worth. So. That's, that's too funny. Well, it sounds like you're doing a lot of cool stuff, man. Um, you definitely uh, change your life dramatically, uh, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was pretty, pretty weird after, like, I mean, the last few years has just been, like, nonstop different things. Now, the, you you said you're doing a lot of traveling. Um, yes. What, 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 what's behind your travels? Like, what's, uh, what are you doing that's making you travel so much? Uh, I just want to see new places, meet new people, mm -hmm. experience new things. Where are some of the uh, places that you've uh, been traveling to? So I've been to Miami this year, Australia, uh, Malaysia, again, well, to see my family and stuff, okay. um, and Croatia and Greece. Croatia, huh? Interesting. Yeah, Croatia was the where the TV was filmed. I mean, the uh, TV show. Oh, okay. Now, out of all those you just named, which was your uh, your favorite so far? My favorite. Yeah. I think my, Miami was pretty cool. Like, uh, working oh, out I know why you like Miami. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything out your mouth. The girls, the girls. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Uh, Australia was really nice. Like, that, it was like a be beautiful place. Uh, we, went, we went to Sydney and we went around the sort of uh, ser like serene areas. Okay, yeah. Australia is definitely on my list, man. That's, that's awesome. Um, now, if I come to the UK, which I plan on doing, you and I gotta gotta hang out, man. At least get a lift in or something. Yeah, definitely, man. We'll definitely, the gym. definitely. Okay. So, um, what uh, what what plans do you have moving forward? Uh, you have any other shows coming up, or 
um, anything like that? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of a few more TV shows, which I, I can't I can't name them for now. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm going traveling actually next week to Nepal and oh, wow. India. Okay, nice. Um, now, besides that, what are um, what are some of your uh, goals moving forward? I mean, I know you 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 want to. You do more traveling and things like that, but do you have any um, big goals, like long-term goals uh, that you see yourself attaining? Because it seems like you're the type of person that once you set your mind to something, you go out there and make it happen. So I can see you probably have some some other big things on the horizon. Yeah, 100%. Man. Uh, I think one of them is definitely to complete Ninja Warrior UK in the future. Um, in terms of career, I, I really – really aspire to be a public speaker so you know talking to people about about fitness uh, mentoring them like life coaching and different ways how they can get through depression more confidence uh, more sort of social confidence things okay. like that now have you done anything like that in the past yeah i've done i've done like eight talks they were like free talks and people really love me like my stage my stage presence okay now did you uh because public speaking is is not easy by no means. Um, have you uh, did you take any kind of uh, classes or courses or seminars to kind of work on that, or did, are you just a natural go out there and uh, no problem speak in front of uh, people? Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of practice. So I went to a few courses in in London, and uh, my job as a nightclub promoter, I had to practice a lot of public speaking. Okay, nice. Um, now, as far as, uh, the, the content that you share when you're on stage, um, do you have anything out there for our listeners that you could, um, perhaps share as far as, um, you know, coming from your experience and, and, you know, for anyone watching who may be, you know, dealing with a similar, uh, situation or, or fighting depression or, you know, just feeling down or, or, you know, wanting to change their life, what kind of, uh, advice do you have for them? Well, a, a, vid a video, you mean? A video link? Or... No, 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 I'm saying like... But, Go ahead. Advice now that I can give to them. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, for people that... For anyone that's in a really low place in their life, I definitely recommend getting into fitness or something that is, like, physical. Like, something that you have to use your body because that will get you out of your head and it will stop you, like, thinking so much. Um, and the main thing is just to make it really fun and enjoyable for yourself. So whether it's yoga, whether it's mountain biking, bodybuilding, you know, something that is fit, gets you physically active if you aren't already. And uh, just really trying, trying a lot of new things because that's how you, you'll meet new people. You learn more about yourself and new experiences. And one thing I found that really helps is meditation. Like meditation really helps you clear your mind and sort of trigger from negative thoughts to positive thoughts. Mm. Uh, it's funny you say that because I've recently um, been dabbling in uh, meditation and, you know, I, I, I had a pretty rough year um, yeah. for myself, but um, I, meditation, man, it, it's really uh, made a huge difference. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, what's that? How long have you done it for now? Um, I think I started, uh, it's probably been maybe six months I've, I've really been trying to do it more uh, seriously but um, a lot of people have this misconception about meditation that it's like you know you're, you're like Buddhist monks and and you have to completely just not think anything and, and you're levitating and just really like you know it's this goofy uh, misconception but it's really not like that so anyone listening I'll give you a quick tip um, basically you just uh, a tip to do is close your eyes you get comfortable you sit up upright um and breathe in through your nose concentrate on that and concentrate on exhaling out your mouth and keep doing that and you'll you'll start to see your you're, you're thinking less and just keep focusing on that so um anyway we got a little sidetracked but thank you for sharing that um you know coming from someone who's who's totally changed their life like you have 
you know, that's some very quality uh, advice. So thank you. Um, that pretty much uh, wraps up the show. But before I wrap up the show, actually, I, I, this would be a disservice to not show your pictures. And I meant to show them during the show, but I was uh, honestly just really into this conversation. So uh, let's see. I'm going to show some of the pictures. And if you want to just kind of tell us a little bit about, you know, when they were taken or what was going on when, when you were taking these pictures, like this right here. Yeah, that was actually when I was bulking last year. And that I think that's one of like uh, the best sort of shape I've ever been in my life. And this is during your bulk, huh? Yeah. Now, how did that bulk turn out for you? Did you put on a, a, a decent amount of muscle that's stuck around or what? Yeah, a lot of muscle. Uh, I put on a lot of muscle. And I think that was just before I did Ninja Warrior, actually. Oh, really? Okay. Now, do you have a coach or what? No, I don't. This, you're just self-taught, huh? Yeah. No. Tell me about this one right here. <laughs> so, I, I sort of did, like, uh, events where hire myself out for like male stripping or like surprise well, birthday parties male stripping huh yeah oh and, shit uh, I, I, I so I get, I, me that would have been a whole 15 minute segment right there <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh that was definitely a, a new new comfort comfort zone i did like nice, nice. okay uh, so i get handcuffed to like random girls or or guys of this like, birthday or hindu uh get handcuffed to, to them for the night that's funny, man. All right, so let's see. What's this right here? So that was at the Body Power Expo. Um, that was about three years ago now. And that was like the first picture that went like viral for me. So that's like where it all began. Now, do you have a lot of people when you go to big events like this, you know, want to take pictures with you and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, nice. So you're kind of a... Your celebrity status when you when you're out and about. Yeah. Now, what? Tell me about this one. Uh, so that was for a bodybuilding competition for IBFA in Newcastle. Um, I didn't place, but it was a it was a really good experience there. Okay. Yeah, you look in great shape, man. Down. Okay. I already saw that. Okay. Cool. So let me uh, close this out. All right, so um, like I said, uh, it's been good having you on the show, man. Um, you know, hearing stories of uh, what is going on here. Okay, so yeah, hearing stories of, you know, um, bouncing back and, you know, overcoming the odds and, 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 and succeeding in life, you know, in general are just amazing. And, um, you know, when I initially try to get you on the show, um, you know, you're, I didn't really know all that about you. I just know yeah. that you were, you know, four foot 10 and you were a bodybuilder, which is insane in itself, but there's so much more to you than just that. And I'm really glad we got a chance to sit down and, and, uh, hear your story. Cause it's really, um, inspirational. So thanks a lot for coming on the show and sharing that with us. Um, Thank you, man. Yeah, it was good being on to finally get on the air with you. Well, and you you mentioned uh, motivational speaking and things like that. Um, yeah. Our our community, the Barbell Life, we're gonna be having um, a yearly type of uh, uh, expo type thing, meet and greet. Yeah. And we're having our first one in May. It's gonna be out in Orlando, Florida. So. You're welcome to come and be a guest speaker if that's something you'd be interested in. You know, get with me yeah, offline. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let me know. Um, we'll make that happen. If not this year, uh, a future year. But um, yeah, I would definitely like to do some things moving forward because you're you're an awesome person. So um, now this is your opportunity. If you want to give any shout outs to friends, families. Uh, sponsors, plugs, anything like that. The floor is yours. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you to my my mentor in bodybuilding, um, everyone that's helped me along my way. You know who you are. My parents um, and my mentors at college. Okay, nice, nice. Um, now, do you have do you have any sponsors or anything like that? Yeah, I'm sponsored by Natural Nutrients. Okay. 
So shout out to Natural Nutrients. You got a, a website or any codes or anything you want to throw out there? Yeah, if you just go to my Instagram uh, page, you can click on Natural Nutrients uh, through there and and order anything you like. Uh, they're all like natural. Now, what is your Instagram for our followers? Uh, so my Instagram is at I'm Chuntan. I'm Chuntan, like I am. I I am. So I'm. Okay. I'm Chun Tan. Go check out his Instagram. Give him a follow. All right. Well, um, before we wrap up, every time I have a guest on the show, this is something I like to do. I like to ask this question. Okay. So out of anything, it could be bodybuilding. It could be just life in general. It, give us some of your words of wisdom, something that, that, that means something to you that you would like to share with, with our followers. So it can be anything, any kind of advice that you would give. Um, I'd say the most important thing in life is not material things, but the experiences and the the memories that you make with people. Because that's what you're going to remember when you, you know, you're, you're at the end of your life. You're not going to remember all, any money or anything that's been around you. You're going to remember the experiences, how you've touched other people and how other people have touched you as well. Awesome, man. Well said, man. Well said. Well, all right, brother. Well, thank you for again for being on the show. It's been my pleasure, and uh, I look forward to doing some things together in the future. And if you ever need anything, feel free to reach out. Thank you, absolutely, man. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Take care, brother. Hey, take care, brother. Bye. All right, everyone. So, um, great guest. Really appreciate having Chun on. Like I said, he was uh, definitely there's. So much more to him than I originally uh, knew about. Uh, so it was great to have him on the show. And as always, the show is brought to you by Barbell Nutrition. Um, and our current product, Thermite. Let's see. I feel like we're not getting this. Okay. Sorry, guys. This, this uh, Google Hangouts is crazy. Anyway. So currently we have Thermite out, as you know, um, thermogenic, thermogenic fat loss complex and pre-workout capsule. And what that means is this is a great product for helping you burn body fat, cut water weight, and um, also it's a great pre-workout alternative. So if you don't feel like taking powdered pre-workouts and you want something more simple and something uh, something more subtle because a lot of these pre-workouts are very intense, um, leave you jittery, kind of upset your stomach, things like that. Same with other thermogenics. Um, thermite does not give you that effect. If you go to our website, www.barbellnutrition.com, you can read dozens of five-star reviews on the product. Everyone loves it. Um, it's an amazing product and it works wonders. So check it out. Uh, message me for a discount code. Uh, I'll be glad to share that with you. And um, on that note, we have Chain Reaction fixing the drop. So that is our intra post workout uh, muscle builder recovery formula. It's an amazing product. Um, it's definitely a game changer, you'll see. Um, so stay tuned for that. And we have two other products on the way as well, dropping later this month. So Thanks for everyone tuning in, and uh, until next time, take care. We're out.